day, everyone. It's Courtney Lucas. Um, I think my orientation is correct this time, so that's a win. I am now out at the generation plant with Ace May. A lot of our customers don't even realize we have our own generation plant. It's pretty unique to municipal utility plants in our state, and Ace is going to tell us all about it. Ace, what you got? Um, my name is Ace May. I'm the plant manager here at Butler Warner Generation Plant. Um, been here about 33 years. Courtney, I bet you most of these folks didn't know that we're the only municipal in North Carolina that owns and operates its own power plant. We're located out in Eastover plant at POD number two. Now, a POD is what we call a point of delivery. It's where we exchange our power from Duke Energy. We take delivery of it here, and then we send it from here out to our substations to cover our favorable load. We do have three of those and located throughout the city. We just happen to be attached to the generation plant that is POD number two. What's behind you? Uh, what's behind you? This is where uh, the power is dropped down from 230,000 volts and that's what our transmission system is. So we transmit to the city of Fayetteville and 69,000 volts to our substations. I think we have 33. It's not my department but I believe we have 33 substations and then we distribute those to the distribution system and it goes to the to folks' homes that, that, that um, route. And tell me about the pipeline behind you. Okay. Let me tell you about the pipe. There's a pipeline behind me um, you probably, you might can see it by that tall transmission pole. That's where we get our pipeline natural gas from. Now, what we have here at the plant is a 260 megawatt combined cycle power plant. With this. So if you can see the big tank in the left side of your screen, that holds ultra low sulfur number two fuel oil. We can burn that at the plant as backup fuel. Now we can store five million gallons of that on site, which sounds like a lot. But when I tell you how much these turbines can burn, it's going to turn down to it's not that much fuel. Each turbine can burn about 45 gallons a minute. So when all eight units are online, we're burning about 21,600 gallons in an hour. So that 5 million gallons will only last about 230 hours. So when we do burn that oil and we burn it up, sometimes we've done that in 2018 when it was real cold here for two weeks in Fayetteville. We have to get it delivered in tanker trucks, just like you see at the local gas stations when they drop fuel at the gas pumps. Those tankers hold about 7,500 gallons of fuel oil, and it takes about 650 of those to replenish our oil. So our operators spend a lot of time unloading that oil after, after a big burn. We have about 30 employees on site that consist of a maintenance group, an operating group, a warehouse and admin group. In our maintenance department, we have mechanical technicians, instrument and electrical technicians, and control system technicians. We have four shifts of operators with three operators on each shift that work a rotating shift. So we always have someone on site 24-7, 365 days a year. We have two employees that work in our warehouse. So we have a warehouse that consists of a lot of parts because this plant is fairly old, so we do keep some parts on hand. And those two employees manage that warehouse and they also, one of them buys parts for us. So let me give you a little bit of history about the plant. We're, we, um, we were built in 1976 to 1980. And that consisted of about eight simple cycle gas turbines. Now, if Courtney swings to the right a little bit, this first unit here is a simple cycle gas turbine. That gas turbine is just like an airplane engine, except it's a little bit bigger, of course, and it's industrial built, and it's hooked up to a generator. In the mid-80s, the commission decided that we needed to add more capacity because the growth of favor was going on, so we decided to convert some of these turbines to combined cycle operation. Now, as she pans over you can see that those turbines there those exhaust stacks are a little taller and there's a blue metal there in between and that's a that's a duct to a boiler so what we do in a combined cycle operation is we send that exhaust from those units which is about 950 degrees and we send it through a boiler we make steam now we send that steam to a steam turbine which is in the building that you see at the far end of your screen and there's a steam turbine in there that we turn and it makes 60 megawatts 
without burning any additional fuel. And fuel is really our biggest cost in producing power. So let me talk a little bit about our, our, the reason they decided to build the plant. In the, in, the, in the early 70s, they did studies and they found out that, you know, power costs were high, gas prices were high, fuel prices were high. And when you, when you get your bill for wholesale power, it's a two portion bill. It's, it's, in, it's in capacity and it's in energy. Where you folks at home, when you get your power bill, it's just an energy bill and you pay for that energy. Well, we have to pay a capacity charge to our bill, which equates to about half of our bill each month is capacity payment. And that capacity payment goes towards basically paying the host utilities cost to, to operate their power plants and to build their power plants. So the commission decided, hey, let's build a power plant. Let's divert some of that capacity payment to paying for a power plant. And that, that is why we built this one today. Ace, I have a question for you. We're getting some questions from our viewers. Um, they're asking, where is this located? Is it off of Owen Drive? And so I'm guessing they're thinking of the POD off of Owen Drive. Right. Can you explain that to us, please? Yes, real quick. That POD is on Owen Drive over the Cumberland Road intersection as you go over the bridge over the railroad tracks. That is a POD there where we get our deliveries from Duke Energy or our power. And then there's also another point of delivery off of Riley Road near the post office off of Cliffdale Road in Riley. And I think there's a Cliffdale Elementary School. It's located behind there. Those are our three points of deliveries, and we're out here at POD number two. So we just chose to build the plant out here in the 70s because it was rural. And, and out here is Eastover. Eastover, we're correct. We're out here in Eastover. Okay. Correct. Um, if you all are familiar with the Cargill plant, we are near the Cargill plant in Eastover. All right, so getting back to us building this plant, if all you customers are, are aware of our time of use rates that we're doing now from three to seven in the summertime and six to 10 in the wintertime, that is when we used to run this plant back in the 70s, 80s and 90s. We would run it during those hours and maybe a little bit of those shoulder hours in order to drop our peak demand from Duke Energy, which dropped our capacity payment. So we took that money that we saved and paid for this plant. So this plant is a fully paid for plant. It's fully operational. And like I said earlier, it puts out 260 megawatts. So in, as the 80s and the 90s progressed through, things changed and we actually went back to a full requirements contract in I think 1997 to 2003. And we negotiated that with uh, probably then CPNL, Progress Energy. Um, they dispatched our plant as they seen fit for their power needs and they gave us a payment for the ability to dispatch the plant. So we did that from 97 to 2003. In 2003, we went back to the full requirements contract because economically it was a better deal. We did that from 2003 to 2012. So we went back to peak shaving again. And then in 2012, we changed the contract back again to full requirements. And that's what we are on today, a full requirements contract. We buy all of our power from Duke Energy. We lease this plant to Duke Energy, and they actually pay us a capacity payment every month for this plant. Okay, so um, we have another question. Is this the gas turbine powered peaking facility behind Cargill? So gas turbine? Gas turbines, correct. Correct, gas turbine and we are near Cargill. You are right. correct. And this was built in the, as a peaking plant, which means you're only gonna run during the peak hours. And like take for instance, a nuclear plant is what they call a base load plant. Um, a coal plant is an intermediate base load plant. Now you hear in the news that the EPA and they're doing away with coal. What they're building today to replace the coal plants are combined cycle plants just like we have here. Just newer technology. They're a little bit more efficient than we are. Um, the biggest uh, advantage for us is that we do have that number two fuel backup. It is more expensive than natural gas. But in the winter, when it's seven degrees outside, natural gas is not available. You want your power, you want to be able to flip your switch on. We can light up on fuel oil and make energy without relying on the gas. I learned something new. I hope you all did too. Ace, thank you so much for telling us about our generation plant. No problem. If you want to learn more, of course, we have plenty of information on our website. Um, and now we're going to the solar farm. Some of you may not know we have a brand new solar farm. 
We have a team out there who is going to tell you all about it. So stick with us.